Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Ink Blot issue number one. This looked like it had so much promise. I can't tell you anything that happened in pretty much the entirety of the first half of the book. And I'm going to explain why after we talk about who made the book. So this is an Image Comics uh, book uh, created by Emma Kubert, who is the writer, and Rusty Glad, with two Ds, who is the artist. It's weird to see a Kubert not doing the art. <laughs> anyway... So the entire first half of this book, right up until the page before you see the staples in the middle of the book, there is no talking. There is only images and these little yellow text boxes with a little slight uh, slit in the upper right-hand corner indicating that it's text boxes, but it's supposed to look folky and old-timey. I really like that. The problem is they didn't fill the text boxes as much as they could, and the script that they used, the font, the type that they used, was illegible to me. It took so much effort to read this ridiculous lettering to me, to my eyes, that I finally gave up. Because I would try to read it, and I'd be like, wait, this doesn't make sense. Let me try and read it again. Oh, no, it looks like it's saying this instead. Wait, let me go back. No, it looks like it's saying the other thing again. And I just, I don't know what to do with it. I finally, I think I got through three pages of struggling with that. And I finally said, I just don't care anymore. So I just started flipping through the book. I looked at the pages. I, I, I tried a couple more times to read the font. Enough of it. The first half of the book, I have no damn clue what the hell. It, it might as well have been a half a book. I paid for a full book. I only got to enjoy half a book. Even the stuff that I was enjoying, the the once you get to the, the staples part, um, fairly interesting thing. There's a lot of dialogue by one character who is trying to chase what seems to be a cat, but she seems to think is a demon. It looks like it's some kind of a cross between both. Who knows? Maybe this is God. God in the form of a very freaking cute black cat. And she's chasing it, and the most ridiculous things are being said. Uh, this seems like a book that, if you're a huge fan of the Sandman and the Dreaming and those kinds of stories, that you might fall in love with this. I liked Sandman, but, you know, Neil Gaiman's Sandman... I could only read the first, there was, he only did like the first 10 volumes of it, whatever, right? I reread the first four volumes after I read the first, you know, the original 10. After that, I just really, I, I've never gone back and revisited it. I can still remember some of the things. I'm more like, tell me something. I'll be like, oh yeah, 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 I remember that. And then didn't he also, yeah, that's me. Uh, they were cool. You know, it was cool stories and all that, but I don't think that it was the end-all, be-all of comics. Change some things, yeah, but it's just not my forte. If you like it, no complaints against you. It shouldn't be a problem that I am not, like, the biggest fan in the world. It was innovative, it was amazing, and this obviously follows it, so maybe this will have more of a female audience, or whatever, and that's not meant as... None of this is meant as an insult. I hope that nobody's taking anything that I'm saying here as an insult. I'm simply trying to explain why it's not for as opposed to saying, this isn't for me, and then just leaving it. No, there's got to be a reason why it's not for me, right? This is the reason why. It's just, mm, doesn't quite tickle my fancy. I won't be reading issue two. Let's put it that way. Anyway, like, I'm not going to deny that it's cute. There's a bunch of things running around. There's definitely a story here somewhere. There's a story that'll start being told maybe in issue number two. But as far as issue number one... It was an intro. The first half of the book was an introduction that I simply couldn't understand because it was illegible to me entirely, Ill illegible. And the second half of the book was just silliness, and I don't do silly. I can't read or even watch a silly like the Naked Gun movies. I've watched all three of them once. I never watched them again. I, I wonder why I even bothered trying to watch the third one. I guess a lot of my friends were like, "These are such great movies," but I. Yeah, it's just not for me. It's it's not what tickles my fancy. Anyway, guys, that's what this book is. And if you enjoyed it, awesome. If that kind of a book interests you, you should definitely go and pick it up. Is this going to be Saga? It doesn't look like it's going to be anything even close to Saga. But 
it could be fun. It could be that kind of very silly, like a very silly take or almost like a child's take on the Sandman stories or, or any of those stories currently being told in the dreaming right now. G. Willow Wilson is doing one of the dreaming, but I think it actually is the dreaming anyway. So there's uh, there's clearly evidently an audience for that. I'm simply not that target audience. And I accept that. It's cool. So, yeah, enjoy the book. <laughs> Tell me how it is later on. Tell me, you know, keep me informed. Keep me abreast of the information of what's been happening. Maybe something totally cool will happen that I'm just like, really? Okay, fine. I've got to read this. But for now, watch an ad, like the video. Talk to you later. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.